yeah, he is. But the answer is not so simple, right? Like, is he too overpowered is a lot of meaning, and the reason I want to talk about it is because this is a pretty big topic in the Tower of God community right now. I see a lot of YouTubers, a lot of people on Reddit, and in the Discord servers, and in YouTube comments talking about, is Bomb too overpowered? Did this all happen too soon? What's going on? Did SIU make a mistake? Or does this make sense for Bomb's character? And it's totally fine. The reason I say yes, he is too overpowered is really just because it happened so soon. It's, it happened so quickly, right? Now, I'm actually kind of a fan of the presentation. I'm, I've always said this, the presentation is what matters to me. If, I've, if I haven't said it a lot, I'm saying it now, okay? Presentation, right? SIU portraying Bomb, where does it lead? Like, just the fact that Bomb is all of a sudden stronger than White, that doesn't matter to me as much as, okay, what does that add to the actual story and what happens moving forward? And if that's okay, then no, Bomb isn't too overpowered, but right now it does kind of scare me a little bit because SIU, I trust him, he's a fantastic author, but he's gonna have to do something crazy here. Before we continue, guys, Look at this beautiful comic by Satellite in our Discord server. This is depicting our first session of Towers and Gods, Dungeons and Dragons with Tower of God. It's a prequel story. If you want to check it out, links down below. Check the card here. It's so much fun, and we're going to be releasing episode four one week from now. Uh, well, streaming episode four, so hopefully you can join us. Okay, so the crazy thing is, just think about it, right? Bomb at the start of Season 3 was about Ranker level, stronger than a Ranker, right? We've seen him fight Delete, and he helped defeat Gato, and he defeated Pan in a one-on-one, -on -one, and he wasn't even using all of his powers. So obviously, yeah, Bomb was Ranker level. And then we get to the Nest, and he cannot fight Kalavan whatsoever, right? Him and Karaka cannot fight Kalavan, you know? And then we eventually see, but then all of a sudden, now he's like destroying white. Like, it's not even close. That's the thing, right? It's not like he's white level. It's like, no, he's destroying white. Like, it's not even close, you know? So that's the thing I want to keep in mind here is that 15 chapters ago, if you had asked me Bomb versus Kalavan, I would have said, Psh, are you kidding me? Bomb isn't anywhere near that level yet. And now all of a sudden I'd be like, easily Bomb wins. Like, what are you talking about? And if you're confused about how that power scaling works, right? And power scaling in Tower of God is weird, but think about it this way. Bomb is smoking white right now. He's not even using the Black March. Like he's smoking white. No second thorn, smoking him. White was on par, if not stronger than Kalavan, just like 10, 15, 20 chapters ago or whatever. Okay, cool. And then we see that Jin Sung is Kalavan level. So Kalavan, but Kalavan did beat him in a one-on-one. -on -one, so Kalavan is stronger than Jin Sung. And Evan Kell is around top 60, and so are they. So it's like, okay, all of a sudden, Bomb is stronger than Evan Kell, stronger than Jin Sung. Now, some of you may disagree. I've seen a lot of people say Evan Kell is still stronger. How are you, like, wh how, how, right? We know Kalavan is around that level, right? Evan Kell is top 60. Jin Sung, Kalavan are around top 100. White is around top 100. I mean, at this point, you could argue that, but you have to admit, they would at least be like on par. And in my mind, I mean, Bomb just wins at this point. He just wins. So the question is, okay, is that okay? Is it okay that we made such a drastic jump so quickly? I actually think it is, again, depending on the future, because of the story that SIU has already set up. We've seen countless hints and countless examples of how insane irregulars are can, and can be. And we know that they're feared throughout the tower. I haven't felt that fear from Bomb. Like, I haven't looked at Bomb and said, oh, I totally understand the fear of irregulars, right? I can see it from Yurik, I can see it from Enryu and Pentaminum. Bomb has never given me that. He's, he's just shown me, okay, he's just stronger than regulars. You know what I mean? But he hasn't given me that, like... I've never been afraid looking at Bomb. I've never been like, oh, I can see where all that comes from. But this time, I do. I actually see it. I feel like this is the first time that Bomb's nature as an irregular has truly and shown itself to such an extreme level. And I feel like that is the definition of an irregular. Extreme. So that in and of itself, like within the world, within the plot, it makes sense. So now the question is, narratively. Narratively, is it okay? Because, I mean, it's been, a, it's been a fear in the community for a long time that Bomb is leaving behind his friends, you know? I mean, even at the start of Season 3, this was kind of a concern with Bomb fighting Rankers and what are Kun and Rap gonna do? They can't fight Rankers, you know? 
And at this point, it's that times like a hundred, because now he's fighting the strongest beings in the tower. Now, he's not family head level, okay? I'm seeing some people out there saying, oh, is he, he's gonna fight the family head. It's like, if SIU shows Bomb defeating the family head, it's over, bro. It's over, like Bomb can fight Jihad at that point. And some people are even arguing that, yeah, he can fight Jihad. It's like, okay, let's slow down a little bit. Like point taken, right? Like plot, if the plot demands for it, Bomb will rise to the occasion. But the way I see it is when you look at a ranker like Nanatona or something, well, Nanatona is an advanced ranker. Let's look at Quant, right? Quant compared to someone like Gato, who's a high ranker. It's an astra, it's a huge difference, right? But then Gato compared to someone like um, Yama is a huge difference. And then Yama compared to someone like White is a pretty big difference. Maybe, you know, depending on how you look at it and depending on transformations and stuff. So it's like, okay, Sure, but then that level, Bomb and White, you know, that area that we're at right now, is astronomically different from Family Heads and Jihad in particular. It's a, it's a massive difference, okay? So I believe what SIU needs to do now is he needs to find a way to still incorporate these other regulars into the story, whether there's a time skip maybe, or they train somehow, maybe Bomb has to split from the group. We're gonna have consequences, right? Bomb's gonna beat White, we all know that's gonna happen. But Bomb is gonna have a heavy heart, he's gonna be a different person, and I think there's going to be some kind of split. It wouldn't make sense if Bomb and his friends travel together from here on out, it wouldn't add up. So maybe Bomb has to go off with the Rankers, and maybe Kun and them have to meet up with like Wang Nan or the other regulars, and they have their own story, maybe like temporarily, and then they meet back together again. That's the only thing that makes sense, otherwise the climb is over. The climb is done. There's no more, there would be no more tension, right? If Bomb just stuck with the group. So to keep that tension, you have to have Bomb fighting even tougher opponents or have something happen to Bomb, okay? And then have the regulars still climbing the tower and fighting opponents on their level. So my point is this, is Bomb too overpowered? Okay, not really. I, it really is only if it's the story continues going the way it is. I said this during Naya's live stream that we had recently. If you haven't watched that, uh, click the card here. It was super fun. The way that this is going, the way that his friends are with Bomb, this is the end of that. Okay, it's worked up until now. Bomb having his friends helping him, Hots and Shibisu doing what they can, but still not being on the level of rankers, but they're still helping, you know? That has to end now, because at this point, the difference now is too astronomical. This is the last arc where you could make me really believe that that's even possible. After this, there's no way that, the, that they could travel together or help each other too astronomical. It'd be like Yama, it'd be like Yama traveling with freaking, you know, me saying and go saying. It's like, it wouldn't make any sense. The difference in power, the difference in scope and scale, it just wouldn't make sense. Now I want a side story with Yama and me saying. I think that'd be adorable. I know a lot of people are scared about where Tower of God goes from here. I'm just excited. Okay, Bomb versus White, extremely hype. And honestly, we needed this. We needed this payoff, I think, for Bomb. You know, we needed him to finally step up his game a little bit. Not finally, he's always been stepping up his game. But I feel like now we're starting to see, okay, yeah, this is the irregular that we've always heard about, you know, the irregular that we've always been clued in on and we always hear hints about power and how bomb could like explode someday and how things could get bad. Yeah, we're at that time, you know, and I think we should enjoy it and then just see where it goes from here. Once we see that, then we can sort of look at it from a bigger scope and then find where the problems are or where SIU managed to actually continue the story in a meaningful way. I think if it was me, it would be, like we already had a couple time skips, but I think time skips are necessary because it does take a long time to climb floors, you know? It takes time. Even in my series, Towers and Gods, the prequel story, like we're not gonna be going through floor two, floor three, floor four, because it would take forever, you know? We're, we're gonna have little time skips and say, okay, you did this and now we're on floor whatever, okay? That has to happen. And so I feel like after this nest thing is done, a time skip would help, but at the same time, we don't want to miss out on an important thing. So it just has to be handled with finesse, which SIU does have. Um, he has to keep focusing on his side characters and not just bomb. Um, so I think he can do it. And I think he's done a great job of it in the nest. 
He just has to now do it with his regular characters. We can't forget about the regulars. So, I don't know. I think Bomb is okay, but what are the implications? He will be too overpowered if it has negative implications. So we'll see. I know it's kind of a cop-out answer, but that's the best I can do. Thanks for watching, everyone. Once again, if you want to check out Towers and Gods, the link is down below. Also, if you like Pokemon, we're continuing our Pokemon Nuzlocke tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Man, this Nuzlocke is crazy. It's a randomizer, so everything is random. We don't know who, what Pokemon we're going to find, but we named them all after Tower of God characters. It's super fun. We just had a pretty big death that I'm still not over yet. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, you can be there to support me. I'd really appreciate it. Special thank you to the patrons, as always, for always supporting the channel. You guys are awesome. Thank you for your video suggestions, always. It's so much fun getting to talk to you on Patreon and hear your ideas and stuff. And yeah, it's just awesome. So thank you so much. And with that being said, I'll see you in my next Tower of God discussion video. Take care.